Mm. What's up? It's your boy Ralph, the right way. If you don't know, now you know. So I'm coming to you guys with a gun, with a gun review, my first one. I just made a change. I'm used to carrying Springfield HDM compact. Magazine empty. Nothing in there. Make sure you guys can see. Point safe direction. Fire. Empty. But this this has been my carry gun for a while. Extended mag with the I guess the mag with the spacer. I guess y'all call it. So you get the full purchase on the gun. It's nice. Nice grip. Very slim. Fits to the hand perfectly. Pick up my sights very well. I wanted to change. <clears throat> Nevertheless, I love this gun. We'll go to the side for now. Because I want to do a comparison with the new gun I got too. But the new gun I got, I picked up. I finally switched over. And got a Glock. Yes, I know. The Glock fanboys is going to go wild. But I still love my Springfield. But I was looking for something a little different. So I'll show you guys what's in the box. So, you know, with your Glock, you come with the uh, extra magazine, cleaning brush, cleaning brush, cleaning rod. You know, you got the little space in there to put the little swab in there and get in there. Real good, clean your guns, no jams. Mag loader, and you know, you, and behind here, you know, you got your little paperwork, you know, your pamphlets, your advertisements, you know, all that good stuff. Yeah. What else? Firearm safety. It did come with a lock, but I hurry up and got rid of that. You know, you don't use those. Store your guns in safe places. If you have kids, educate your kids on firearms. Love nothing, not toys. Education is key. But now that we have got past all that, let's get to the main attraction. The lock. Comes with a mag in the gun, empty. The gun's empty, as y'all can see. Point, safe direction, nobody's over there. Clear, not even the neighbors. Single action, striker, fire, firearm, you know. <sighs> what can I say? I wanted the big boy, 45. The lock 30. Gen 3. Couldn't find a 4. What can I say? Haven't really shot it. Just really ran 10 rounds through it. Just to see if it, to see the functionality. You know, everybody said clock work right out the box. But you know, me, I got to see for myself. I'm more of a see for myself type of person. So with that being said, function. Fired all 10 rounds. No hang up. I expected it. No problem. It's a block. What can I say? <sighs> so, this is the... That's the thing I wanted to get into. This is... They say subcompact. I say compact. And the reason I say compact... Back to the Springfield. See, Springfield. Again. Empty. Nothing in the chamber. No, I'm not pointing it at myself. Just show you guys. There's nothing in here. On the screen film, you see it says compact, not sub compact. Compact. 3.8 barrel length. That's the barrel length. Now, if you compare the two, how to. Let me get this box out the way so I can really show you what that is. Y'all got Glock. I will come to the box. So, 
Springfield. I do have the 13 rounder, but my 13 rounder, I put the Terran Tactical base plate to give me the three extra rounds. So I carry 16 instead of the 13. So I don't have that mag to show you. Well, I do, but I'm not swapping it back out. So with that being said, it's just a flush mag, so we we'll just take this out. Now, for it, you guys, you see these guns are almost, if not exactly the same size. Same size. So how could this be a subcompact? It's the same size as my compact nine millimeter. Yes, the XDM is chambered in nine millimeter. Now, height wise, if you take off the flop mag, you know, take off the mags. If you look here. The XD is slightly, slightly light. I say a half an inch taller than the Glock. Slide to slide, they're the same size. Trigger guard on the XD is a little higher. Yeah, it's a little higher than the Glock. I'll say one thing, the Glock came with two 10 rounds, 45 ACP. I feel like that's enough. I will be throwing a Glock 21 mag in here for my backup. But for carry, yes, I'm switching this to my everyday carry. Right there, boom. And you know, it gives you a little purchase, more purchase on the gun. Like, yeah, I I would prefer to get my hand up under the trigger guard a little bit more, but really, my 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 pinky fits right on there. I get a full grip. I'm not really worried about that. With the XD, with the flush mag, no. Pinky hangs off. That's why they give you the full size. With the full size carry with the bag with the magazine sleeve and this is 20 plus this is 19 plus one so you got 20 rounds if you pipe one full purchase now with the tear tactical base plate i'll show you guys it's almost the same thing as the plus 10 in the block. It's, a, it's slightly longer, yes, it is. Slightly taller, okay. But you, you get the gist of what I'm saying. And you can still conceal this very well, if that's what you choose to do. But back to the Glock. Yeah. I wanted to switch over to 45 ACP and I wanted I wanted something, you know, still not too big. I'm not a real big fan of full size firearms, I should say. But this is not a sub compact. You guys can argue me down if you want to. You would never convince me that this is a sub compact. Compact? Yes. Sub no. Glock 26, subcompact. Glock 27, subcompact. We can even argue to say the Glock 33 in SIG 357, subcompact. Glock 30, not a subcompact. But into the features, it has to, I think this is the original Glock 30 slide on the Glock 30 SF frame which means slim frame. And when we say slim frame, we're not talking about length, we're talking about width from the trigger guard to the back strap, well, to the back strap, slim. 
you know, just to give you more grip so it won't be so bulky in your hand. Won't feel like you got a lot in your hand. But it's nice. I know a lot of people say they switched out the Magwell because it didn't, but mine's protrudes very nice. I, I have no problem hitting it. Let's do that again so you can see it on camera. I have no problem hitting it. I really don't have to adjust. I can just, you know, lay back on target. Um, I I really like this gun. I got it really because I do like a a bulky gun. If you if I say if I should say bulky or you know wide, big, you know whatever you prefer. Yeah, that's pretty much why I picked the Glock Thirty. Not really a big fan of full size guns. I said that before, and I feel like the Glock Thirty fits me very well. You know, if I wanted to, you know, I could throw it in the pocket. I'm a big dude. Pockets are big. Throw it in the pocket and go. Or, you know, it looks good on the holster on my hip. Very nice. And I already have a slim to seal. Actually, perfect for that. But, you know, I want it a 45. You know, I feel like, mm, like, that looks so intimidating. Like, that's a big deal. I wouldn't want to be on the other end of that. Mm. And then again, back to the grip. I was looking for the Glock Gen 4 because it has the same texturing that's on the back strap, on the sides. On the side, you get like this fake grip tape type feel, but it's real slick. I nevertheless still get a good purchase on the gun. It's like it's not going nowhere. And again, I did run ten rounds through it, and you know I didn't really have to readjust my, I didn't have to readjust my hold, my grip, or nothing. You know, stay stay firm in my hands through all ten shots. You know, but you know as I shoot and my hands get sweaty, you'll see how it holds. But I feel like it's gonna do very well. And if anything, you know, I could always throw some grip tape on there. And, you know, work that out. And then, what else did I want to touch on on this gun? Yeah, the takedown lever. I'm not going to take it down. Y'all all know how to fill strip a Glock. If you don't, it's other people showing you. I'm not going to go through all that right now. But the tabs could protrude a little bit more. So I'm thinking about exchanging those and putting in some metal ones too. Because these are plastic. And I'm thinking about switching my trigger guard because the trigger guard, I believe, is plastic too. Not a big fan of that. Oh, and a lot of people like to put the extended fire slot, but I think that's not necessary because it's slim and tight to the frame, and I feel as though that's for a reason. And I have no problem hitting it. I have no problem hitting it. I hate it perfect. But yeah, I like the compact, not sub compact. This is a compact firearm, not sub. Very nice. And I am looking for modifying triggers. Yes, when I shot, I really wasn't trying to, you know, work on shot placement. So I really wasn't using the sights as much. I was just really shooting for functionality to make sure the gun works, which it does. But a lot of people say they don't like the U notch sight. I feel like I'll be able to pick them up very well. But we'll see. I will have a range video coming real soon on it with my panel partner that will be doing videos with me. He's not here right now. But yeah. Oh, coming up, I will be doing a review on the XD S Slim and 45 Compact. That gun's a pack for a subcompact. You'll see when we bring it out. But for right now, this is my new baby, my new Carrie. She's very pretty. And if I do choose to switch my sights out, you guys should leave some comments and let me know what was the best sights 
you guys run with. I know a lot of people use uh, Marigold or something like that. If I'm saying it wrong, correct me. I know you guys will. And other than that, I'm going to dress her up real nice. I don't think I'm going to put any back straps on her. It didn't come with any. But I think that's only the Gen 4 that comes with the back straps. I don't think the Gen 3 comes with back straps. Which is a, you know, which kind of sucks. Because for a $700 done, you would think it come with all the bells and whistles. You know, not like, you know, H, the top, top of the line, top, top of the line gun. But... My Springfield came with, well, I can't, well, I recently moved, so I lost my box of my Springfield when I located it, I'll let you guys know, but my Springfield came with different back straps, I think like three different back straps, three different sleeves for the magazine to fit the back straps, you know, it came with all the bells and whistles, uh, fiber, extra fiber, uh, size to put in the front size that you can remove, switch out from green to red, you know, nice, it's overall nice. Metal mag release, metal mag slot, metal takedown, you know, ambidextrous mag release, Glock, no. On the Glock, you can switch it out and switch sides, but your slide stop is going to stay on one side, which is the same thing on the XD, so that's not really too much better. And the XD slide stop really protrudes a lot, if you can see that. See if I can get that on camera. It protrudes a lot. Don't worry, nobody's behind me. The pressure of the lock is very, very tight to the frame. Like, very tight to the frame. But overall, I like it. Big 45. I can get a full purchase on it, so I don't feel like that'll be... You know, I don't feel like that'll be an issue. But other than that, I want to see how this is going to shoot. And I feel as though I will enjoy carrying the Glock 30. But, you know, this is my first video. So, I appreciate you guys like and subscribe. You know, and feel free. Let me know what you guys think. Crawl if you want to. Whatever you guys do. But yeah. I think I might like the Glock World. Oh, and the frit the frame's pretty decent. I like that. Not too much of a give. You know, the barrel got a little play in it, but because it's you know, it's a drop barrel. So when you cycle around the barrel drops barrel, so yeah. But it locks in pretty nice. Springfield locks in, but you know, it's the same drop barrel. But yeah. And I, I don't, I'm not gonna lie, I think the spring, Springfield has a better fit and finish in the Glock. Like, the Springfield has, don't have too, many, too much wiggle room like the Glock does. Which is not a review. This is not a comparison, you know. There's certain things I just noticed I wanted to point out. Oh, and the finish on the Glock. The finish on the Glock, I don't know how I really like it. Like, it has, like, a very slick texture. But also kind of rough, if that makes any sense. But for the string build, it's just smooth. And I had this gun for... Almost, I want to say six, seven years, and the most wear and tear is just from the holster right up on the muzzle, right in the beginning of the barrel. I don't know why I said muzzle, but right in the beginning, you can see like right here is where the finish is starting to rub off. As a or the Glock, I have this gun probably two weeks. Or two weeks from whenever you're seeing this video. If you're seeing this video later, then you do the math. But no, nothing really, you know, little, little ding like that. You know, like that, just for putting it in the holster. So I don't know how I really feel about this finish on the Glock. 
Gen 3. They said the Gen 4 finishes better. So hopefully I'll be able to get my hands on one of those. One day, if not to own, to at least compare. But stay tuned and look forward to more videos and updates on the Glock and other games that we'll be bringing to you guys. And hopefully I'll be adding some, you know, adding some little more features to it. I kind of think I want to make it a little razzle-dazzle. I haven't seen nobody really do nothing spectacular with a Glock 30. I haven't seen a real good Glock 30 build. You know, most people just throw a Glock 21 mag in there and call it a day. I uh, probably uh, put a different back strap on it. Might do a trigger job. Not really. You know, well, with like a lot trigger. Like, I don't know how I feel about it. Maybe because I've been running Springfield for a while and I'm used to the Springfield trigger. But the reset, lovely. You, you like I go. I'm, I can't say I. I can't lie. We, we, we. Reset. Now look. Now I'm having trouble with the slice stop. <laughs> but that reset, right there. Boom! You back at that wall. Back at that wall. Now that the reset, impressible. Right off the box trigger, impressive. That's very impressive. So boom, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know now. Cause the Springfield trigger, you have a lot of take up. It's a little spongy before you really get the wall, but. Oh, not good. Backdrop safety. But it's like spongy. You still got take up, take up, take up, and boom. But the reset. Coming all the way back out. Yes. Okay, we did that to the. We did that to the Glock. Had the better reset, but the Springfield. When it comes to pulling, that this has to be like a four, four and a half pound trigger. Like it's not hard to shoot at all. Like. Boom. As a good trigger. And I'm no expert. I'm no expert. But that clock trigger, it feels like I gotta put a little bit more pressure on it. And I think the Glock trigger is a five point, a five pound, five and a half pound trigger. So that might be it. But overall, it's, it's nice. I'm going to take it out to the range, hopefully this weekend, and see what I can do with it. But, yeah, this your boy Rob the right way, signing off.